Well, hey there. Yesterday, Shirley and I rode down to Open Pond and had a had a good day outing. Uh, some of my videography didn't turn out like I wanted it to, and then I, I inadvertently deleted some of it. So I don't have a video of that, but I am going to run a few a little slideshow of pictures that I that we've taken at Open Pond over the years, and we've got some really good memories from down at Open Pond or over at Open Pond, and we're going to make more memories at Open Pond in the, the, the years to come. At least we hope and pray we do. All right then, I've been promising you a knife video, and not just about any any knives, but about my four absolute favorite home crafted knives. Now folks, people have, uh, there's a lot of differences in criteria, the way people measure knives. And you, we simply need to be honest and admit that all knives are not created equal. And, and pretty much leave it at that. The extent that I baton a knife doesn't go beyond maybe a little kindling processing uh, or maybe doing what I need to do to fashion a, a fire hearth for friction fire. That's about the extent that I baton a knife. I don't use a, a knife for a purpose that is uh, that an axe or a hatchet uh, can stand in for. Now, my four absolute favorite, and I'm going to do these in the order that I acquired them. The first one is a little bitty dude, and I'm not going to mention the name of the individual that crafted this knife out of respect for his present condition. And uh, let's just suffice it to say that he, he spent a lot of time making this for me as a Christmas present that he presented to me and it must have been back in 2011, maybe 2010, somewhere around there. And I wore it as a neck knife for a good many years and I used it for a, a lot of chores, the little sheath that he, that he made. Um, he made it out of scrap leather and the only problem is wearing it as a neck knife is, you know, instead of just tying to the little round hole where the knife tends to ride flopping back and forth, I had to wrap this and come off of it with, with a long uh, uh, leather boot lace, and that's the way I wore it. I lost it one time. It, it bounced out of the little, the little sheath. I was back on the farm. And when I realized that it was gone, I, I went immediately and searched until I found it. This is a dear, a dear little knife to me. And I'm, I have found a piece of leather that I'm going to sew onto the back of it and attach a paracord to it so that I can, again, wear it as a neck knife. One of the things about it as a neck knife is it's very concealable. You tuck that down in your shirt, and it doesn't it doesn't doesn't show. That's a great little knife. I'm going to stick it right here for right now. And the next one, another home crafted knife, is something that I found at a reenactment at the Fort Mims reenactment that was on a trade blanket, and. It has an antler handle. And fits my hand really good. The, the blade holds an edge really good. I did take a, a file to the very back of it to get a sharper 90 so that it would throw a spark with a ferro rod. And I mean, it's just a, it's a great knife. It's sharp. It fits good in the hand. 
and it'll help me around the camp in processing woodland kindling or cleaning fish or processing game. The shortcoming of it, for me anyway, was the sheath that it came in. And mind you, I did not pay much money for this knife. It was, it was, uh, it was pretty cheap. So the sheath, I'm going to replace it with one that is more wearable, something that will wear on the belt. And I've got the leather to do it with. I just need to make time to do it. I've got the time to do it. I just need to make time to do it. So we're going to stick that one right here. Now, this is a humdinger. This is a humdinger right here. There's a story behind this knife and this sheath. Ain't that sweet? Yes, it is. It's heavy, full quarter inch steel, has hickory handles, hickory scales, and this knife Travis Neal made and showed a picture of it in the group, uh, the MBA group, Mountain Bushcrafters Alliance group, uh, those years ago. And I saw that and I really wanted this knife and made a deal with Travis on the knife. And then my leather work leaves a lot to be desired. And I cobbled together a sheath for this knife and I didn't, unbeknown to me, in getting ready to retire at age 62, the Queen threw me a retirement party and as a retirement gift, Shirley and our friend Tabitha figured out a way to smuggle that knife out of my man cave without me knowing it. And my buddy brother Bo, my, my brother buddy Bo, <laughs> he took the knife to a leather smith and had the leather smith make the sheath, stamp it with my initials. Also, brother Buddy Bo, Buddy Brother Bo, contacted Rick Lindsay about making me a fire steel. And Rick was not at the time making them and he said, okay, you know, Bo was telling him a little bit about me. He says, I'll, I'll make one. And so Rick Lindsay made the fire steel, put the, put the antler handle on it, engraved it with MBA, which the initials MBA stand for Mountain Bushcrafters Alliance. And we had some great, we've got some great memories from our days uh, when MBA was was active doing skills camps and, and that sort of thing. We we've, we we de developed some very dear friendships with people, and we're looking forward to hopefully seeing uh, seeing some of them again very soon. Now we're going to stick this one right there, number four in my list of all-time absolute favorite handcrafted knives. This is a little goober right here. This is one that my my another brother, my another brother Mitch, made and gifted to me. And I believe it's made out of a, a piece of coil spring from an automobile. It's a great little knife. Fits the hand well. Well, it's just comfortable. It's balanced. And the, uh, the back of it, I touched it up just a little bit with a file so that it'll throw sparks with the fire steel. And uh, 
It's sharp. It holds an edge. Uh, it's almost shaving sharp. That's the way I like to keep my knives. Almost shaving sharp. If it's shaving sharp, it's in my opinion, it's too sharp because you stand a chance of, of rolling that blade or, or, or dinging it if you're working you strike into a piece of bone or something. So, but Mitch made that for me and gifted that to me at Brother Bo's wedding, as a matter of fact, if I recall. And now, the sheath, there's a story behind the sheath. This is one of my just cobbled together sheaths that I made from some leather from the boot top of a boot that my sister-in-law wore. Well, she wore the pair of boots, but she was a police officer that rode a motorcycle on Long Island. And uh, so I was able to repurpose some of that boot that wouldn't fit my foot and turn it into a sheath to hold my Mitch made knife. And uh, there's my little four absolute favorite home crafted knives that I cherish. I cherish them. And uh, that's, I, I don't know how I can say any more about them.
there you have it. My four absolute favorite knives. What's coming up? We've got Fish Pond Lake coming up in June. We've got the Upper Peninsula in July. And this coming weekend, if the weather continues to hold and it's promising that it will, we're going to be doing a weekend camping trip, maybe three, four days camping at Coleman Lake, uh, east of Birmingham in the, the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, not too awful far from Chihaw Mountain. So there you have it, folks. Appreciate you watching. Appreciate you subscribing. We'll see you on the next one.